Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we've got a really cool fish for you and that is the fish in this tank right here, Cryptohero Sahika. It is the T-Bar Cichlid. It's not often you can talk about a cichlid that stays relatively small, is not super aggressive and has the potential to go in a community tank. And so we're going to talk about the Cryptoheroes today. We're going to talk about how we breed them, how we care for them, tank mates, so stay tuned. So this is Cryptohero Sahika. It is the T-Bar Cichlid. It can be found from Costa Rica up to Panama. So it is a Central American Cichlid that stays relatively small. Uh, the cool thing about this fish is you'll typically find it in rivers that have varying flow, uh, anywhere from very slow to moderate. And now what's really cool about these fish, we're looking at a male here. So the males clearly have a lot of nice color. Uh, they typically are a little bit larger than the females. So the males maybe top out at five inches. Females a little bit smaller, maybe three and a half to four inches. The fish that we're looking at here are well over a year old. And I would say the males are probably somewhere around the three and a half inch mark with the females probably about three inches. So they don't grow super, super fast. Uh, but again, the, the males have a lot more color. There's a lot more um, ornate finage to them. And we'll see the female here in a second. I think the really cool thing about this fish is how peaceful they are when they are alone in a tank. So what we're looking at here, we've got a 40 gallon breeder that is planted with jungle valley. We've got some driftwood, we've got some rock, and there are five sahikas in this tank. And what we're going to see as time goes on here is that we've got two of the sahikas that have paired up, this male with a female. And because of that, they are pushing the other fish to the other side of this 40 gallon breeder. Before they be paired up, this wasn't really an issue. The five of them got along wonderfully and they had been doing it all year. But now these, these two are protecting this corner, this rock area, and so they're a little bit more aggressive than they normally would be. All right, so what about tank mates? With these fish, again, this is a cichlid. It is a Central American cichlid, and so often cichlids get kind of a bad rap of being really aggressive. This is a type of cichlid that isn't very aggressive, and they stay relatively small. Now, I probably wouldn't keep them with the more aggressive cichlids, things like, you know, Jack Dempsey's, Jaguar cichlids, Texas cichlids. I think they would be very much overmatched in a situation like that. But you could keep them with smaller cichlids, things like the Nanoludius or maybe some Multispinosa might be nice. I probably wouldn't keep these fish with other types of Cryptohirus in that genus just because there's a, a little bit of a similar looking pattern to them. And sometimes you will get conspecific aggression. So I'd probably stay away from things like uh, convict cichlids, for instance. But these are, are great fish uh, in terms of you know, be, them being in a community tank, it's certainly a possibility. You could mix them with tetras. You know, maybe you got black neon tetras or lemon tetras, congos, uh, diamond tetras. You know, so you're just your your general tetras would be pretty cool as kind of a schooling fish. Uh, quarry cats would be fine. We've got them in here with bristlenose, plecos right now. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of options there. If you are going to keep them in a community tank, I would highly recommend just having one. Uh, if you have multiples, you have the opportunity for them to pair up, and then we get a situation like we have in this tank where we've got three of them kind of stuck over on the right-hand side, and then we've got the male and the female here. They're going to be guarding this left-hand side, that rock structure, and so there's a little bit more aggression in this tank than there has been in the past, but if it was just one male or one female, I think you'd have pretty good luck uh, in terms of them being a relatively peaceful fish. Our water parameters, I, I would say, are average. Uh, we keep pretty much all of our tanks right around 78 to 80 degrees, and that's what this tank is right now. Uh, we haven't had any issues. These fish will probably be okay, you know, if you're down in the mid-70s all the way up to the low 80s. Again, we're right around 78 to 80, and they are breeding and happy, and their colors are looking great. The pH in our fish room comes out of the tap at 7.8, so that's a little bit on the higher side. But again, they're doing fine. Uh, they could probably go as low as, you know, somewhere around neutral and not have any issues. So the pH, they're going to be relatively tolerant of pH as long as it's a steady pH. That's more important than trying to hit some ideal number. Our water hardness, again, comes out of the tap somewhere around 180 TDS. That doesn't give us the whole story, but it gives you kind of an idea of our water parameters. And again, they are fine there. I don't think they're particularly sensitive to water quality issues. As always, we want to keep our water quality as as 
high as it can be so we don't have ammonia we don't have nitrites no fish does well with ammonia or nitrites in a tank uh, nitrates are typically in this tank less than 20 parts per million and they are thriving in that environment feeding them is really really easy uh, we feed them a variety of foods uh, such as tetra flakes and we've got new life spectrum pellets the sinking pellets they really like those they will eat frozen brine shrimp frozen bloodworms they go crazy for live baby brine shrimp and you wouldn't think of fish this size even at this size three and a half three inches that they would eat live baby brine but i've said this before even larger fish will enjoy live baby brine shrimp and these guys love it they all run to the top and so a variety of foods can be fed and they're really just they're not difficult to feed uh, tank size well again what we're looking at here is a 40 gallon breeder I would say for a group, this is about as small as you're going to want to go. You, again, you can already see that we've got a couple of the this pair here that have kind of taken the other three and pushed them off to the right-hand side of the tank. If you were dealing with just one, could you get away with a 29? Maybe. I think that would be a little bit small with a full-grown male. If you had a pair and you were breeding that pair, could you get away with a 29? Probably, but again, I think it would be a little bit on the small side. Uh, in terms of decorations rocks driftwood plants they like all of that here you can see babies so we'll, let's talk a little bit about the breeding process the pair that we have love the rock work on the left hand side they will they don't need caves you know they, sometimes they will breed on flat surfaces but this pair decided that that rock work and that cave was theirs and so that's where they decided to breed which is pretty cool uh, the mating process that males and females go into the cave and then eventually the female will come out or the female will stay in the cave uh, she will guard the eggs the male kind of guards the perimeter and the parental care is fantastic as we can see here now you can see what's happened here the female has gotten really really dark her eyes are really popping so this is a breeding color for her usually she's not quite so dark but she's got a lot almost a black color to her right now with the babies out there uh, they do a great job of caring for the for the fry you can see the female especially she will chase any of the other fish off to the other side and that's what she's been doing ever since the fry were born the male will kind of stay around the perimeter and he'll guard that now feeding the fry is super simple we feed almost all of our fry live baby brine shrimp and that has worked out wonderfully could they eat crushed flakes probably but live baby brine works so well we just haven't really seen a need to mess with that uh, the fry are relatively hardy, so that's not really going to be an issue. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is if you have a community tank and the pair is guarding fry, they are going to be really rough on any inhabitants, whether that's tetras or quarry cats or plecos or other types of cichlids. So if you're going to have a breeding pair, you're probably going to want to keep them on their own or in a really large tank, like maybe a 75 gallon or even larger, just to kind of make sure that the other fish still have a place to go. What we've done to increase fry survival, because we do have a couple bristlenose plecos in here, is we have a light that stays on in the room itself so that when the tank lights go off at night, we have almost like a, a night light for the fish because I want the males and females, the, the guarding parents, to be able to see their fry and see if there's an oncoming threat. What we've found is in a community setting, if the parents can't see plecos and they've got eggs on, let's say, a piece of slate, the plecos are going to come in and eat all the eggs. Or, you know, if you've got really small fry and there's enough light for larger tetras and stuff to see them and the parents can't see them as easily, there's an opportunity there for them to pick off the fry. So we do leave a light on in the room. It's, it's not very bright, but just enough so the parents can continue to guard their fry and make sure that they can understand threats and recognize them when they see them. So Cryptohero Sahika, the T-bar cichlid, it's a great fish. It's got some nice color. It's relatively peaceful. It doesn't get huge for a cichlid. Uh, they're relatively easy to breed, super easy to feed. You know, it's something that I wouldn't hesitate to put in a community tank, you know, as long as I just had one, not a pair. But they're they're great fish. There really aren't a whole lot of challenges to them unless you get a breeding pair and they start to become aggressive towards other fish. They're not necessarily a super common fish in the hobby, but if you see them, you run across them at a local fish store or at a club, I would highly recommend giving them a try. I think you will enjoy them. 
All right, everybody, so that was Cryptohero Sahika, the T-Bar Cichlid. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a great fish. Again, it's something that stays relatively small, is not super aggressive, has some really nice color, great personality. So if you're looking for that fish that has personality in your community tank, I would certainly look at giving it a try. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.